stepped out onto the pitch at Salhurst Park at half-time with two girls dressed in Victorian costumes, Sarah Glass and Debbie Aldous, to present a cheque for £19,000 to the Palace chairman, Ron Nodes. It's about half the cost of an electronic scoreboard which is planned for the Sainsbury end in about eight weeks' time. A huge installation, 42 feet across, 8 feet high. The gesture marks the paper's 120th anniversary and the Palace responded with a special cover to their programme. Manager Steve Coppel, sporting a large moustache, and assistant manager Ian Evans, complete with a tasselled cap, dressed like a couple of Victorian footballers to study the first ever edition of the Croydon Advertiser. It was a great day on Saturday, except for one thing. The Palace didn't win. In fact, they very nearly lost. Although Ian Wright grabbed a gift goal in the second minute, they were 2-1 behind to their promotion rivals Blackburn Rovers with a minute to go when a defensive mistake let Mark Bright scramble home an equaliser. Palace flew off to Marbella for four days of Spanish sun today for a breather before the vital part of the season. They haven't got a game next weekend, so Steve Coppel decided to give them the break. And finally in sport, coach loads of Crystal Palace fans returned home disappointed today after their side lost 3-1 to Nottingham in the Simod Cup final at the city grounds last night. But it must be some consolation that Palace did at least come close to reaching a Wembley final. A tie secured in the 67th minute was soured a little by the 84th minute send-off of Burke, who pulled back Carr after the Forest winger was clear. Perhaps this affected the second division club's concentration, because Pearce made it 2-1 in the 88th minute with a low shot from 10 yards through a pack of players. Webb scored his second goal of the game with an injury time lob to rob Palace of any chance of their first appearance in a Wembley final. But Palace manager Steve Coppel praised his players afterwards saying, I think we proved we have one of the fittest teams in the second division. And on that hopeful note we say goodbye. Well the first one was uh, laid in to Nigel from Steve Hodge I believe and uh, Nigel laid it back first time to me and it, I just caught it very sweet and, and the ball went in the net. I was delighted about that obviously. And the second one? I was really waiting for a foul because I thought I'd, uh, I'd nudged the, their defender out of the way. And I just lobbed it with my left foot, which a lot of people can't believe. And uh, it went in and it was, it was very pleasing because it was very hectic last five minutes. 14 games unbeaten now. Forest are in devastating form, led by the excellent example of their captain and England left back, Stuart Pearce. Nail biting time for Crystal Palace after a hectic weekend, which has more or less got them a place in the playoffs in the second division. The big game yesterday away to Manchester City was the one they really wanted to win, but they had to be content with a one all draw in front of a crowd of over 33,000, thwarted, would you believe, by a standing goalkeeper. Nigel Cleghorn, having put City ahead after eight minutes, had to take over when their goalkeeper quit at half-time with a groin strain. He did pretty well too, with standing Palace pressure, until a brilliant goal by Ian Wright levelled the scores. It was Wright's 27th goal of the season. His 26th had come on Saturday at Selhurst Park, with a devastating finish to a smart move, which was enough to beat West Bromwich. It's eight years since Palace were last in Division One. Their football is designed to get the best out of their strikers, Ian Wright and Mark Bright. 56 goals is their joint tally so far. Now only Blackburn stands in the way of their real goal, First Division soccer. The win against Swindon put a lot of confidence in us because we had to come back from 1-0 down. But yeah, we are very confident, yeah. It's going to be a competitive hard game. And um, as long as we you know, get chances, hopefully one of us will score. Does it matter between you who scores? I think the most important thing is we win. Yeah. How important would first division soccer be to you? Well, this is what I got into it for, really, me. Um, it's not everything I wanted to do. You can't get nowhere without being in the first division first, you know? Everyone wants to be judged at the highest level, and we want to be judged in the first division, and that's where we aim to be next year.
finally it's happened. One event he could certainly be shouting about is the success of the local football team. Didn't the Palace do well on Saturday, beating Blackburn Rovers 3-0 to clinch promotion back to the first division? It means they keep a neat symmetry because they won promotion in 1969, then 1979, now 1989. And what a happy day for their manager Steve Koppel, who celebrated five years at the club on Sunday. When he joined, they had just finished 18th in the second division, with crowds barely reaching 5,000, and their last match had been against Blackburn Rovers. Well, on Saturday, there was a capacity crowd of 30,000 to watch Ian Wright score two goals, and in between them, Dave Madden to hit another penalty, as the Palace won their way through after extra time, spurred on by some urgent words of encouragement at the end of normal time, by Steve Koppel. Victory was greeted by thousands of delighted fans swarming onto the pitch to acclaim their heroes and for a delighted Koppel to greet the cheers of the fans. So Palace make it eight London clubs in the first division next season, joining Arsenal, Tottenham, Queen's Park Rangers, Wimbledon, Millwall, the also promoted Chelsea and of course their tenants at Selhurst Park, Charlton Athletic. Koppel, showered with congratulations after the game, had one key word about the Palace performance. Magnificent. We were the third best team in the league and we've proved it, he said. But Crystal Palace manager Steve Koppel is going back into Division 1. They beat Blackburn in the playoffs, remember. So far, refusing to join the rush to try to buy his way to success. At Selhurst Park, they say that they're laying foundations for a big future. With money in the bank, Palace attempting to consolidate as a first division club. In 69 and 79, Palace were promoted, but both times it quickly went wrong. In 89, and with money in the bank, they believe that this time they can last more than a year or two at the top and mobilise the huge potential support in South East London. I always say that the South London public's a theatre going public. If the product is good, they'll come out their armchairs and watch. So we've got good opposition coming. Uh, we've got to make sure that we give them all uh, good games and I, I know it's not just a question of asking people to come out I know if we compete well against the big boys uh, we'll get 20 odd thousand here 30,000. Palace's oldest player is only 28. Koppel's own experience of life at the top as one of England's best post-war wingers will be crucial as the squad seeks to acclimatise. We've got absolutely nothing to lose and we'll go into the first division with a fresh approach we'll go there to attack it's the only way we can play football uh, and that'll be home or away. Uh, we're not going just to hang on by the skin of our teeth. Uh, we have ambitions. Uh, but at the end of May, I think if we're still in the first division, everyone will be happy here. When Palace were promoted in 79, they called them the team of the 80s. Whether this bunch of newcomers can develop into the team of the 90s may well depend on Bright and Wright, the forward partners with 58 goals between them last season, who've been the best strike force outside the first division. When it gels on the pitch, people just think, oh, it's come down natural, but we have to, we have to work off each other a lot and yeah. find out each other, what, what each other can do, good and bad. And, you know, it's hard work what's paid off, hard work. They'll know that if they slip up or anything, we are going to score the goals. And we just aim to just score goals every game. That's what we want to do. We just want to score. Everyone has talked about Palace's potential for such a long time. And it's just down to myself and the players and the staff and everybody connected with the club. To, to make sure uh, the, poten the potential does actually become something tangible and we're uh, a big club in years to come. I hope he's as philosophical at the end of the season. Boxing.